Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. I'm here with what's become our resident under-23s, under-18s expert, Sam Carroll, also the breaking news reporter for the Liverpool Echo. So, welcome to the show again, Sam. How are you doing? Thanks, Tom. Nice, nice, to, uh, nice to be back on. Obviously, as we were just talking about off-screen then, I think uh, this uh, this Zoom is, is telling me that I should probably get a haircut and <laughs> cut my beard soon. So, we're, we're all learning lessons here today, I think. <laughs> I've been just saying, I've uh, my mum's been my barber, and I, I, I think she's she's done what she can, but I think I need good job. I need a professional, um, <laughs> she's all right, she'll do for now, but yeah, um, coming on to the under 23 stuff, we've got uh, they've been doing all right recently. The under 23s have had a tough run of form, really, but one shine and light has been the form of Nathan Broadhead, and he's got I think it's eight in his last seven games, including the hat trick against Manchester United. Uh, it, it, he seems to be doing really well. Would you say this is the the, the most prolific period of, period of his career so far, potentially. Yeah, I think I think it would have to be. I think he's been. Uh, I think David Unsworth tried it in, in the pre season, using him as a as a centre forward, and you know he's more traditionally a winger. Uh, but where Ellis Sims then going to Blackpool in January, he's been he's been playing up front and, and doing really well. And obviously, it's more probably to do with injuries and things like that. But being rewarded with a place on the bench for a couple of first team games, isn't it? I don't know if if, if one time there was a we were winning three or four nil or we were chasing the game and maybe Josh King had already been used then it'd be nice to to see him given a chance because he's been in Everton for a long time and uh, I know that he did try and uh, he wanted to kind of stay at the club last summer to to try and uh, impress Carlo Ancelotti and and show what he can do and at the moment I don't think there's much more that he could do now obviously with, with the options we have I, I'd say that he'd be someone who I think he was on loan at Burton Albion last season. Had a good season there as well. Um, so I'd imagine the big championship teams uh, queuing up for Nathan Broadhead in the summer. And I think every time you do go and watch him play, he does always, uh, he puts the work in as well. He reminds me of Calvert-Lewin in that sense of, you know, even when he's maybe not scoring the goals, he's he's still working hard for the team. And he's got that little moment of quality as well, which which uh, I think David Underworth will be delighted to have him in the under 23 squad between now and the end of the season, to be honest. I mean, it'll be interesting to see what happens to him after that as well. He's made the bench a few times, as, as you said, with, with the likes of Tyler on Yango, Kyle John, and Harry Tyler, Harry Tyler as well, because uh, we've had a fair few injuries in recent weeks, and uh, a lot of youngsters have got the chance uh, to, to be on the bench and the experience of being part of an Everton first team squad. So, uh, out, out of those few who have been in and around the first team, who do you think is the most likely to get their chance next in the first team? Well, it's pro- probably next would probably be the two lads who, who made the senior debuts already, wasn't it, against Sheffield Wednesday in the FA Cup. I think Onyango, Tyler Onyango and Thierry Small have, have been two that uh, have caught the eye, I think, of pretty much anyone who's watched them play at any level over the last six to 12 months. Uh, you know, everyone knows all about uh, Tyler Onyango at under-23 level now. You know, he's a box-to-box midfielder. He can get forward and score goals, but equally adept then at playing a little bit deeper and and seeing games out. I was speaking to Paul Tate, the under-18 manager, after the FA Youth Cup game uh, last week. He made on Yango captain, obviously, you know, still eligible to play in that Youth Cup game. He says that the under-23s and the first-team staff now are just kind of working on Tyler technically, which makes sense because I think he's, what, six foot three, six foot four. He's a big lad. I think he needs to fill out a little bit more, but, you know, he's only eight, 17, 18. That'll come with time. So Evan really co- focused on on him technically now, which is which is going to be the next step I think in his development. But at the end of the day, 17, 18 year old lad training every day with Alan Hammers, Rodriguez, Andre Gomez, Tom Davies, who's been in his position coming through the academy. There's just no way that can't benefit a player like that. Thierry Small a lot a lot more raw. You know he's got so much pace uh, to burn. Loves getting forward. Loves scoring goals from left back. He's been working uh, with the England youth setup this week as well which is good to see because he, he went off in the FA Youth Cup game uh, with an injury pretty early on and that City game on Saturday I think Everton all, all, all need him back when you consider City have got the likes of, of Liam Delap eligible uh, for that game which will be tough um, so, so them two definitely as well it, it just in terms of looking at what Everton need I think at left back next season it, it would probably be not the wildest suggestion to say that Niels Nkunku could go out on loan that would probably leave Dean Ben Godfrey filling in at left back. Jared Branthwaite could do that if he was still here. But Small would probably be in, in the mix for some cup appearances and things like that. And, and the same with the midfield. I think 
there's question marks to be asked over what Fabian Delph will do next season. There's question marks about, uh, you know, how much of a part Gene Philippe Jabaman will, will ultimately be able to play. So th- there could be chances for, for Tyler Onyango to, to play in there. But if not, I think another season at under 23s would make sense for him because he still is a young lad. And then the other lads involved on the bench, Harry Tyler, goalkeeper, isn't he? So, you know, he, he probably is still quite a way off, especially now with the emergence of Joe Virginia and Carlo Ancelotti saying they want to sign Robin Olsen. Ryan Ashley, the centre back's out of contract at the end of the season. Uh, Kyle John, the full back. Another one might then be looking at potentially getting a loan. There was loan interest in him last summer. Probably be the same again this year. Another kind of modern fullback. So, yeah, d- different kind of stages in their Everton careers for old lads. I'd say that Broad Ed Ashley might be looking to move on in the summer and, and the rest will be kind of hoping to kick on in the under 23s and, and catch the eye. But I think still the, the, the main thing is that the age, the average age in the 23s now is getting lowered every week. It has been since January when the likes of Benny Beningamy, uh, Matthew Pennington, Ella Sims all gone out on loan. So now I think it is good that the under-23 team is a proper under-23 team. You know, you look through the last game and all the lads are 16, 17, 18. You know, I think the oldest player now is 18, 19 in that team, which is what a lot of Everton supporters have wanted, who, who keep up with doing the 23s have wanted to see for a long time now. So I think that's exciting. And, and we're seeing them filter through to the to the first team and even though Carlo Ancelotti you know proved with the signings of Alan and Hammers last summer that he wants players for the here and now he, he hasn't been scared to, to put people on the bench if he thinks they're good enough he hasn't been scared to you know give Small and Onyango their debuts when he has to he, he threw you know Jao Virginia in okay he needed to that was his only option but you know he gave he gave Jao a lot of confidence and said a lot of nice things about him as well so I think it's a, it's it's exciting times and you know, now that Bramley Moore Dock has, has been set in stone, it, it is quite exciting, isn't it, to look forward and think, could Tyler Onyango, can Thierry Small make themselves part of that first team group for, for when we move in there? Could well do, yeah. It, it seems to be developing into a into, into a young squad with a lot of potential and it's, it's finally becoming a, a in terms of development squad, really. And there, one of the players developing in that is uh, Tom Cannon, who signed his prefer, first professional deal earlier this month and scored two in, in extra time of that FA Cup. FA Youth Cup third round. Um, so how, how promising is he? And uh, what what do you think his prospects are for the future? I was, I was made up for him to be honest, because at the at the FA Youth Cup game, there was uh, Duncan was there, Dave Dunsworth was there, Marcel Brands was there, his chief scout Greta Steinson was there, and obviously Evan pulled it back to two one in the first half after conceding twice in the open half an hour, and, and Tom missed the penalty on the on the stroke of of half time, and he is a good lad, he's a nice lad. Uh, away from the football pitch as well. So I felt quite bad for him at half time. But, you know, he, he showed bottle, which, you know, as a young lad, you you miss a penalty like that. You, I assume you, you you probably know what people are watching or you've been told who's going to be there watching. You know, your, your family are there. You know, there's loads of Evertonians watching on the YouTube. And, you know, you, you, your head could easily fall off there at a young age, couldn't it? But the goal that he scored an extra time to, to put Everton 3 2 up was superb. A yeah, little Kale and effort from the edge of the box, so a proper striker's goal. Um, and then the, the penalty, and then he scored the penalty. You know, at first, he, he kind of shied away from taking the ball, and Paul Tate shouted on and said, Tom, you, you take the penalty. And, you know, again, a, a lesser character might, might have said, no, I don't want it, or, you know, not had the confidence to put it away again, which he did, and, and sealed the win for Everton. And spoke to Paul Tate after him, and I think he's following a similar path to Ella Sims, really, in that. You know, Ellis caught the eye of a lot of people. You know, I think there was a lot of people, especially on social media, kind of shared and images of how many goals he'd scored. And now he had more than people like Rashford and stuff at that age. But, you know, at Everton, there was a real kind of emphasis on uh, focused on other, other facets of his game. You know, it wasn't just, they knew he could score goals, but can you do the hold-up play? Can you work the channels? Can you get other people involved? And things like that. And I think now that's the same for Tom. He scored 16 goals in 16 games for the under-18s last season before the season was cancelled because of coronavirus. And Everton know he can score goals. It's now adding in those other bits of his game, which I think he did show against Wigan. So Everton have set him a challenge to to, to get into the under-23 team every week. That's his next goal. Uh, and, and as we've said, you know, with, with Nathan Broadhead potentially moving on the summer, you know, with Ellis Sims doing well at Blackpool, he'll probably want to take that next step, which would then probably be a championship loan. He could even get promoted with Blackpool the way they're going this season. 
and he might want to stay there. So there's there's a position that's going to come up there. You've got Lewis Dobbin as well, who's been injured for the majority of this season, but he'll also want that Charlie Whitaker, who played up front with Tom Cannon also impressed. So there's a chance there for Tom to take it. And Everton are just working on him, working on what else he can improve. And if he does that towards now and the end of the season, I'd say he's in a great position to to start next season as the the starting under twenty three striker for David Unsworth. And then at the end of the day, it's it's goals, isn't it? You you score goals at that level, and it gets to a point where they can't ignore you anymore. And then that might be where they might start getting opportunities to train with the first team, to be involved in first team squad. So yeah, very very exciting progress. And you know now that he's been handed his first professional contract, the Hopefully the, the sky would be the limit for Tom. He's been working with the Republic of Ireland under-19s on its national duty this week as well. Um, so, very, very kind of promising and, and a really good week for him before he went on international duty. Yeah. And another player who's, uh, who's recently uh, lighting up the under-23s, or he's just made his debut anyway, and he's, he's, he's assisted on his, on his under-23s debut. Uh, he's been doing well in the under-18s as well, is Matty Mallon. Uh, yeah. Now, this is a name that a lot of Evertonians, uh, when this news broke last week, didn't really know much about him. So what do we know about Matty Mallon? Well, it was a weird one, to be honest, at that under-18s game. I, I, he was one of the ones when I went through the squad list and you're like, what the hell, who's, who's this kid? But for, from the minute, from the first minute, Matt, Matty was uh, superb. He got a goal from, from right back, obviously, in a, in a wing-back formation, took it like a, an experienced finisher. And then a few days later, dusts his boots off and, and gets, a, gets an assist for the opening goal in the under 23s and, and Everton called him a modern fullback. They say he's a progressive fullback. He's someone who can get forward and join in with the attacks. Uh, and he's another one, you know, circumstance now. Everton are kind of looking to replace Seamus Coleman, you know, in the same way they have done with Leighton Baines over the last couple of years by bringing in Luca Dean and, and Niels Nkunku then for, you know, even more forward into the future. And I think Matty Mallon, from the, the two games that we've seen of him, is, is showing that, you know, he could certainly have a, have a say in the next couple of years. And, yeah, as you say, he's a 17-year-old lad. I'd never heard of him. I don't think many people could say that they had heard of him before last week, but it looks like Paul Tate's delighted with him. David Unsworth is going to be even more delighted with him. You know, throwing him on, player gets injured quite early into the first half, and and to put in a performance like that on your under-23 debut, again, it shows that Everton are kind of breeding good characters who've got confidence and quality to do that kind of stuff. So I think he is the one now for me that we'll all be keeping our eye out for in the next couple of weeks, starting with Man City in the FA Youth Cup on Saturday. But going forward from there, hopefully he can have a, a big impact in the under-23s. And, you know, who knows? Maybe even get a chance to, to work with the first team if in training, if things like that kind of come up between now and the end of the season. So, yeah, it looks like Everton are really excited by him. And uh, I was certainly ex- excited by him. I thought he was probably the standout player from the FA Youth Cup game. And he looks like he's got a bit of everything. He looks like he can defend. He looks like he can, he can get forward. He picked the right moments to get forward as well, which I think you know shows that kind of level of maturity and a football brain that you need to play at the top level. So it ties in nicely, really, doesn't it? With I think the first couple of times we spoke on this under twenty three show, and we did speak about you know players being quite old in the under twenty three years. It was the same old faces and things like that. But I think Matty Mallon probably personifies the the changing of the guard that Everton are really keen to to bring into that level. And, you, you know, uh, obviously in the Premier League too, there's still kind of a winner and you can still get relegated. And there's, there's that worry that, you know, you turn over the team too quickly. As much as you don't want to just play these games to win, you, you don't want to play the whole season losing and, and get relegated because that's not good for anyone's development either. But, you know, with these people we're talking about, it feels like the next generation can easily come through and be good players at that level while learning the you know the basics of the kind of the game to to then kick on in the first team yeah definitely and that's that's what, something we touched on in the in the first couple of times we recorded and saying that uh, obviously it's not all about yeah we won two a couple of premier league two titles but it's about development of these players and these young lads rather than uh, playing playing the older lads and that's definitely um, seems to focus of shifts uh, a shift this season, which is which is credit to the uh, the academy staff at Everton and another credit to them is is the form of Reece Hughes and it's under twenty threes at the moment. And you reported there uh, this morning for the Liverpool Echo that uh, he's he's attracting interest from a Championship loan uh, potentially. In, I, I think that's for next season. Is there any more on this? And where do you think he'll end up next season? I think the 
he's been one of the standout players in terms of, you know, he's got goals and assists to his name. He's been, you know, he can play the four, the six, the eight in midfield, if you're kind of going on on those modern terms. And, and he can be used out wide as well. And, you know, Dave Dunsworth does like kind of using lads in different roles to kind of get them used to that versatility and, and seeing, I think, what they can do in, in unfamiliar positions. But but Reese has been great. He's just aimed to call up to the Wales under 21 side for the first time. And, you know, you see it quite often with Wales, Scotland and Ireland, don't you? If you can get into that huge squad and then impress, the, the first team call up isn't usually that far away, which is great for him. Uh, it does seem like there's, there's championship interest kind of surfing, which is which is good news. Again, for Everton, they've shown with Ellis Sims that they're not always desperate to kind of get someone out there straight away. You know, they bide at the time. With Ellis, they thought that maybe six months working with the first team, uh, playing in the under-23s regularly, would have been more beneficial for him. And then got him out, got him as low in, in January. And from Sims' performances so far, it looks like that kind of way of thinking makes sense. It looks like he's doing really well at Blackpool from, from what we've kind of seen of him. So I think that could be the decision for Everton to make in the summer. You know, if people are kind of sniffing around for, you know, a bit of an all-action midfielder, he's a set-piece specialist. He's got, you know, a lovely strike on him. He can score goals from outside the penalty area, uh, you know, all based around a really nice technique. So, you know, if clubs are kind of looking for that in the summer, Everton would have a decision to make to send him out then or, or potentially, you know, say stay for six months, be, you know, the key player or one of the key players in the 23s, you're playing every minute and things like that. And then look for a move in January to, you know, potentially a championship club, which, you know, similar to what we've done with Lewis Gibson and Jared Brantwaite this season. So it would be quite interesting because he's another one who maybe this time last year, people hadn't heard that much of. You know, he only broke into the under-23 squad late last season uh, when a few people kind of moved up to the first team and things like that. So, you know, he has had quite a rise over the last 12 months, which has been good to see. Um, but yeah, I think this is this is the path that Everton now need to follow, isn't it? To get lads into the under twenty three team, you know, between the ages of sixteen and eighteen, give them twelve to eighteen months at that level. I think that is still beneficial, you know, because there is quite a jump from the under eighteens, uh, and and then start trying to secure the best loans possible. You know, we've we've got a mixed record as a club, haven't we? With sending players out on loan, and I think we do have to make sure that when we're sending people out, it's, it's the right move to either get them back as a first-team player or boost the value to, to ultimately sell them on. So I think Reese would probably be in the first category of, of wanting to send them out to see what he can do with an option to bring them back to being in and around the first-team squad. So that's something that will come up in the summer. But, you know, first of all, hopefully finish the season strongly and build up even more interest in them with some more goals and assists, which is what you want from your midfielder. Yeah, definitely. There's some, some more favourable fixtures coming up. I know they've come out of a, a difficult run of games against uh, Chelsea, Spurs, Man United and Man City in the last four games, which is really difficult. But they've got some, some, um, some I wouldn't say easier fixtures to come, but uh, maybe teams that aren't as, as, as big in state as, as, as those teams. And of course, one big game coming up, though, is the FA Youth Cup next round. And that's, uh, that's against Manchester City at home. So that's going to be a, a big ask. Uh, so do you, think, do you think Everton will be able to get through that one? Uh, no, probably not. I think uh, City have obviously got one of the best academies in the world, and I think they won the third round quite convincingly. I can't remember that. I think it was five or six nil um, in their third round game. So, you know, players like Liam Delap and that have already been blooded by Pep Guardiola. So, it will be a tough game for Everton, uh, and they will do well to get through it. But it's experience, isn't it? I still think at that age group, it's not always about winning. Winning the FA Youth Cup would be prestigious getting through against City would be a massive result for the club and for Paul Tate but you know if it doesn't happen it's it's still the lads have got to go out there and, and give a good account of themselves I think they've already shown in the third round they've got bottle and they've got a bit of personality you know to they went 2-0 down against you know a Wigan side who, who were quite impressive and you know were quite aggressive in that opening half an hour and I think there was definitely some nerves from Everton so I'd like to think that first game is showing them you know look this is your one chance a season to, to play in this competition. You know, it does attract a bit more of a crowd and a bit more attention at the end of the day. If you go out there like what Tom Cannon did and you score a couple of goals or, you know, you run the show from midfield or you keep a clean sheet in defence, then it could be your name kind of in the papers the next day and, and being spoken about on, online, which, you know, is always such a nice boost for the lads. You, you can tell the young lads do appreciate it when they have 
some kind of media exposure or, you know, fan fan groups like yourselves, like Toffee Blues kind of mention them and, and tweet about them and things like that. So, you know, it, it's another opportunity. It's another opportunity as well, I think, for the older lads like Onyango um, to, to show what they can do. It's a chance for lads who've stood out at that level over the last 12 months, like T.A. Small, like Reese Welch, the centre-back, to kind of, you know, pit themselves against the best at that level, which is what they're going to do. So it'll be interesting. Hopefully it's a Saturday afternoon kickoff. Hopefully any Evertonians who are at a loose end at the weekend can, can tune in. I'm sure it'll be being streamed, hopefully by the club again. But if not, I'm sure it'll be, be on somewhere. Um, but a good challenge, yeah. And, and, and again, I think towards the end of the season, we're going to see more and more lads getting opportunities in the under 23 squad. So a, a nice chance to kind of, have another glimpse and see who's going to be kind of impressing or, uh, over the next, what, who, like Matty Mallon, who are the names to, to watch out for over the next 12 to 18 months. So an interesting game, Joe. You know, Everton certainly won't be favourites, um, but you know, it's, it's youth cup football quite often at this level. You know, you as you've said there, you look at, it, it's not the way it is in the Premier League. You know, you don't necessarily see Manchester United winning the Premier League two all the time. Whereas, you know, over the last few years, things like the likes of Derby and West Ham United have had a really good youth set up. So it's not always, you know, the, the big names who are the best team. So, you know, I, I'm all for Everton causing an upset and, and having another good day in the Youth Cup because wouldn't it be great to, for the lads to have a have a little run in that competition? Definitely. Magic of the FA Youth Cup, you never know, we'll see. But uh, <laughs> as you say, even at this level, it'll be a very good experience for those lads to put themselves against against the best at that level. So, yeah, uh, make sure you tune into that one. We'll put details of where that's being streamed on on, the, on our social feeds in the next uh, in the next few days or so. But that's this Saturday coming up, so keep an eye out for that, definitely. But, yeah, as I say, uh, thanks a lot for coming on, Sam. It's been, been a pleasure to speak to you again and get an update on the under-23s, so thanks a lot. Thanks for having me, Tom. Hopefully, we'll uh, be speaking about more stars of the future at the uh, at the end of the season. Definitely, yeah. It's, yeah. It seems to have improved very much this season. So I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Let us know what you think in the comments and any any stars you think we should keep an eye on as well. So let us know. And also, uh, make sure you give the video a like. Give us uh, give us both a follow on Twitter if you fancy. And um, yeah, join us next time on the Toffee Blues.